They call it their Game 7 of a Stanley Cup Final. Two teams, one match, more than 100 years of history. This is Canada's game the way you've never seen it before. Cambridge, England. For centuries, it's been home to great thinkers, venerable scholars. In modern times, noble hockey players. Andrew Ashcroft and friends are off to practice, a weekly event with its own unique ritual. For Ashcroft, it's a journey that began four years ago in Canada. Jonas, Rangers lost the end last night, eh? Oh, yeah. He arrived at Cambridge from Sudbury, Ontario, thanks to a prestigious scholarship name for Bill Gates. He's about to earn his doctorate in engineering. Playing hockey here was something of an afterthought. Someone heard through the grapevine that a Canadian was applying in the engineering department, and chances are that he played hockey. So next thing you know, I started getting random emails um, saying, do you play? If you do, please bring your equipment. And uh, yeah, that's so why I brought my gear with me and a dozen sticks. Ashcroft is the captain, one of 10 Canadians playing for the Cambridge Light Blues, the university's hockey team, or ice hockey team, as you must specify here. Dude, I already gave up my, it must be, my run for the must be the <laughs> prime minister's <laughs> office. There's no rink in Cambridge, so they have to drive more than an hour to the nearest arena for practice at 11 at night. Time to bond. Oh yeah, well you better tell me if you lost the fan you played in squats. <laughs> Time to cram. Time right now is everything. Really, I said, how can you stop people from wanting to play the game? The light blues have dealt with the quirks of British rinks. They've played exhibitions against other British teams. Now, the challenge that really matters, the one game they practice for all year, is less than a week away. The varsity match, as it's called, against arch rivals Oxford. Anything that has to do with playing Oxford um, is the ultimate game. We essentially train 11 months a year to play one game. We can go winless in our first 15 games, but as long as we win the final one against Oxford, the season is a success. Oxford, England. In the dining hall of one of the university's most beautiful colleges, the arch rivals sit down to dinner. The ambience is classic old England. The dinner conversation, classic Canadian. Alexi Kovala. I know I'm one of the best. Patrick Kovala. Wow, that's great. Not surprisingly, the talk drifts towards the annual face-off against Cambridge. The Oxford Dark Blues, as they're known, play host this year. It's probably going to someone's going to have to drop a pot, ceremonial pot. It's all a bit new to Ottawa's Lalit Agarwal. He's one of nine Canadians on the team, one of many rookies. Mm -hmm. I traveled to India, China, Thailand, Vietnam, a bunch of developing countries. Right. His journey to Oxford has, in his words, been long and winding. After years of study and then work abroad, Agarwal decided to pursue a master's degree in economics. He says Britain's historic ties to Canada made Oxford a logical choice. Still, he didn't quite know what to expect when he got to the university. I, I showed up with um, a backpack that I kind of traveled the world with <laughs> and a suitcase. And I just kind of, for me, I, I thought it was just going to be another stop. And I kind of thought I'd show up and figure it out when I got there. Um, it's funny because people are like, you're not taking any books, you're not taking anything. I'm like, well, you know, I'll just go there, buy a couple books, write a couple papers and come home. What he ended up doing was sending home for his skates. Hockey became a big part of his Oxford experience. And soon, Agarwal was juggling lectures in economics with lessons in the history of the rivalry. It's brutal. You know, I, it, it's probably stronger than, than I ever anticipated. 
you just can't even mention the other school without, you know, snickering. Academically, it's very competitive. Athletically, very competitive. Just really on all levels. It's, you know, it's Oxford, Cambridge. It's, it's, you know, I'd probably say one of one of the biggest rivalries kind of around. And as it turns out, among the oldest in hockey. There's an entry right here. Andrew Ashcroft scans a faded so, Cambridge um, logbook. Names, rivalry. dates, and other details of the rivalry with Oxford have been duly recorded. But of the very first varsity match, decades before the NHL, years before the first Stanley Cup, only the final score is noted. Oxford 6, Cambridge nothing. We've got uh, technology bringing back history here. So we've got some wonderful footage of the old, like the varsity matches in the 1920s. The traditions of this rivalry are cherished. Came Both teams still do some training in Europe, where some of the first coach. varsity matches were held. Wow. For players like That's Ashcroft, living scene. history um, is an inspiration. So, I mean, when you watch this kind of stuff uh, and think about your place in all of it, you know, how does it feel? Um, you know, it really started hitting home my first time in Switzerland when I actually went to Sam Ritz and, you know, walked down and essentially walked down the same path that they just took and then playing out, outdoors um, on the same rinks that they played on, you know, 100 years ago, that started to really bring everything into perspective. It is something that is going to stick with you for the rest of your life. It, it is something that I can't explain to any of my friends. We do have this amazing tradition since 1885. The Oxford-Cambridge varsity hockey match may well be older than the Stanley Cup, but it's about more than the history of just one game. It's about how Canada's passion for hockey kept this tradition alive, how Canadians, past and present, came to these universities in pursuit of higher learning and built their own remarkable legacy. Michael Talbot is a keeper of that legacy. Originally from British Columbia, he spent the past 10 years as an Oxford academic, but moonlighting as a player, water boy, even coach for the hockey team. These days, he's also writing a history of the Dark Blues. I think most people that you, you mention it to are surprised to hear that, that hockey is played in, in, in England, let alone, uh, let alone Oxford. Uh, and then you explain that, that it's one of the oldest teams in the world, and they don't believe you. <laughs> Uh, and, and you can't really blame them. It is such a strange idea that, uh, that ice hockey in, in, in Oxford would be over 100 years old. More than that, Talbot discovered an extraordinary Canadian lineage. And when I started realizing how significant the, the, the players on the team had become, uh, n none of them had actually played in the NHL as far as I know at, at the moment, but, uh, but it's all what they achieved in, in in life, I suppose, in, in, in terms of their careers, in academia, in government, uh, in law. Suddenly, Canada's hockey history had a whole new chapter. Former Prime Minister Lester Pearson skated for Oxford. A teammate was former Governor General Roland Michener. George Stanley, in the middle of the photo, became New Brunswick's Lieutenant Governor. Among the premiers to wear the dark blue, Newfoundland and Labrador's Danny Williams. Then there's the contribution to the game itself. The Oxford Canadians, a bunch of Rhodes Scholars, were first to represent Canada wearing the maple leaf. They won championships all over Europe, their exciting play inspiring most of the rest of the world to adopt Canadian hockey rules. Why do you think it's important in the end to, to make sure that this, um, this history, this, this tradition is preserved? Well, I think I was shocked that it uh, that no one had done it before. Uh, coming to the sort of uh, one of the great seats of learning, to find this 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 great noble tradition of of well, certainly from a Canadian perspective of of hockey uh, that had been largely undocumented. Uh, I think it's actually uh, an important part of even Canadian hockey history because it's it's such an uh, unknown part. It didn't take long for Lalit Agarwal to appreciate the responsibility of playing for Oxford. Well, it's funny because we were joking at, uh, at the beginning of the year, just kind of the alumni on the team. You know, the, the real pressure isn't to kind of win the varsity match. It's really to kind of go home and, you know, be prime minister or, or the governor of the Bank of Canada or like a Supreme Court justice or something.
It's a legacy worthy of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Last summer, Cambridge captain Andrew Ashcroft crossed the Atlantic with an old varsity match trophy. Joined players from decades past to hand over the cup to Canada's hockey shrine. I was the goalie. A former Ontario Supreme Court justice. One in 52. Okay. Because Cambridge won. Nine to, Nine to two. When I was the goalie. A retired corporate lawyer. And we won by a kind of an overwhelming score. I won't tell you what it was. <laughs> a university president. Event. I was also three years on the team, including that um, high scoring game, which I promised not to mention, which <laughs> Dave Harley's now mentioned. But, one by um, one, Oxford and Cambridge alumni shared memories of varsity matches long gone, but not forgotten. We were losing 8 nothing after the first period when I went to the timekeeper and said, I think when the puck gets shot into the crowd, uh, you should let the clock continue to run. <laughs> he said to me, no, you're going in the good direction next period. For Ashcroft, looking back, put the present in focus. This just shows a bunch of Canadians can fly over and study in you know, one of these world-class institutions, but still have that little bit of Canada with you. Okay, go ahead. At Cambridge, Ashcroft tried to mold his passion into a PhD project, using science to enhance the performance of a hockey stick. Things didn't really work out as planned. Um, they assumed that a nice hockey stick behaved just like a field hockey stick. So when I said that there's a lot of bending in a stick, they said, no, there's no bending in a hockey stick. You can't do that. That's not a PhD project. So essentially, there's always been something on the side, and especially the fact that you know I'm surrounded by hockey players and we're always playing hockey and talking hockey. Or listening to hockey. In a place they've dubbed Cambridge Ice Hockey House, it's not unusual to find the Canadians enjoying a Leaf game late into the night. Good, good, you watched my game. There you go. <laughs> Sandin just scored. <laughs> At Oxford, work on a term paper gives way to studying NHL highlights. Agarwal checks in too, and true to the sense of rivalry, he follows his beloved Ottawa Senators, not the Leafs. It's that kind of obsession that fascinates Daniel Colgate. He's captain of the Oxford team, and a Brit. He believes the rivalry owes a debt to the Canadians. I don't think it would exist. Without the Canadian content, Canadians just have a passion for hockey that's hard to kindle into British people in such a short time. When they come over here, they, they bring their passion, they bring their skills, they bring their knowledge. Canada's game may never rival more traditional sports at Oxford and Cambridge. And Agarwal knows hockey players will never enjoy the same status as, say, rowers in England. But for him, playing hockey at Oxford is no less special. To kind of be here, and you know, be around a bunch of Canadians who are going to end up in Canada. You know, I, I already know there's three or four people on the team. You know, and it's a small team, so that's like a third of the team. That you know, they'll probably be my wedding party, and you know, I'll know them for the rest of my life. And you know, that that's just great. You know, I, I, that's probably the best part of the whole experience. Winning doesn't feel too bad either. There are final team meetings, last-minute strategy got sessions. Full control of the puck. Why just give it back to them? The game's the thing now. Oxford won last year's varsity match, and over the long history of the rivalry, has about twice as many victories as Cambridge. For Ashcroft, it's a record that stings, and last year's loss is one he's anxious to avenge. There's been a couple times when I thought to myself, wow, I really, you know, I think after last year's season, we had so many injuries, and it was such a, I was so tired leading into the varsity match. And then I, um, I ended up busting my knee up in the game and uh, had surgery this summer. And had we not lost the varsity match in overtime, uh, I was definitely, I hadn't planned on playing again this year. So what made you decide to come back? Um, essentially, it was, it, was, um, it was the loss. Don't move. There's resolve at Oxford, too. I'm excited, nervous. Um, you know, I've never, never played in a game of, of kind of this magnitude, and I think just to kind of be a part of it, it it's really, it's great. 
what would be um, the reaction if you lose? We're not going to lose. Game day, and the visiting team arrives to do battle. After four years with Cambridge, the realization is setting in. Ashcroft says this could be the last meaningful game of hockey he ever plays. There's a joy that, you know, we're finally here and that you finally get to essentially the team gets to step out on the ice and do what we've been training so hard to do. And then there's, there's sadness. You know, for a guy like me who's been here four years, this is my family, I'm saying goodbye. Oxford's lineup lacks that kind of experience. Most of the players are like Agarwal, new to the varsity match. Yet, they are the defending champions. They have home ice advantage. Emotions are swirling. It's almost like you're living a dream. Um, you know, something that you never expected to do. And uh, I just thinking like a year ago, uh, I was working in Toronto and I uh, had no idea that I'd be coming overseas. And here I am, um, overseas at Oxford studying and playing hockey. You know, I can't really ask for much more. Well, this is our game seven of the Stanley Cup for, for our guys. Um, I've seen, this will be the tenth one that I've seen, and uh, they're all the same at the beginning. First 10, 15 minutes is just everyone trying to find their legs and uh, lay out a big hit, possibly. Uh, sometimes trying a little too hard to do that. Uh, the, the hockey's a little sloppy to begin with, and you just try and not make a big mistake. And, uh, and then you try and settle the teams down, and then try and look to start sc scoring some goals. For Cambridge captain Andrew Ashcroft, this is his crowning moment. He scores two goals in the third period, and the team is up five to nothing. But this battle is nothing if not fierce, and Oxford does not retreat. With seconds to go, the Dark Blues avoid the indignity of a shutout. Final score, Cambridge 5, Oxford 1. Both teams realize that this tradition is unique in hockey, perhaps unique in sport. If you saw the group of guys that get together in September, um, you know, and, and you know, you come out first practice, you know, and you, you know, it's unfortunate, but a lot of the times you shake your head and you just think, wow, how are we going to do it again this year? How are we going to mold all these different guys who are just brilliant academics who aren't necessarily the best hockey players in the world? So, uh, but no matter what, at the end of the year, they're, you know, we're all best friends. It's that bond the connection with the past, the sense of history that has kept this extraordinary hockey rivalry alive. I was debating whether or not I'd be playing next year, um, you know, just given the workload, but uh, yeah, no, I think I'll be, I'll be back next year. I will be back. Uh, I want to win that because now I know what this first match is about. Three cheers for Oxford! Have a For The National, I'm Tom Harrington in Oxford, England.